Good morning and welcome to the uh, Friday meeting of the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission. We'll begin this morning with the invocation of pledge and I've asked Commissioner Connie King if she would do that for us. Our Father God, so much is whirling around in my mind and heart this morning, but right now I just want to thank you for being the source of everything and for our creator who's given us um, dominion over your creation. Thank you for every single person on staff, every commissioner, every person I've met that we've accomplished some things, maybe failed at some things, but all under your direction and your help and your guidance. So we give you the thanks, we give you the glory, and especially we thank you for loving us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Danette, would you call the roll, please? Tony Sanders. Here. James Stroud. Kent Woods. Here. Tommy Woods. Here. Hank Wright. Here. Brian McLaren. Here. Kurt Holbert. Here. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. In front of you or on your iPad, you should each have a copy of the minutes from last month's meeting. Okay. Your a question or a motion for approval? Okay. I have a motion for approval from Commissioner Granberry and a second from Ripley. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Director Wilson, do you have any announcements? I would defer to uh, Commissioner Ripley for just once before I speak, if that's okay. Yes, okay. <coughs> May I be heard? Absolutely. Okay. We have a birthday, and you all think I'm talking about Connie, which it's always Connie's birthday, but today is Angie's birthday. And so we got her a little cake, and we want to say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Angie. Happy birthday to you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad to share my last one with you. I'm going backwards from now on. <laughs> oh my gosh. The reverse mortgage. Look at it. Reverse mortgage. Reverse mortgage. Sorry, Pat. Thank you all so much. You um, make me feel very special. I appreciate that. I almost forgot it's my birthday after yesterday, so thank you. <laughs> thank you all so much. Thank you, Ripley. Take a few seconds here, a few minutes. Yesterday was a big, uh, a big day for the agency and for the sportsmen of Tennessee with the, the, the duck blind rule and all the things that went along with that. And I just wanted to, um, and we recognize the commission, and I, we appreciate everything that, that y'all did as far as voting, as far as consideration, taking all the time that you did to, to answer emails and to talk to the constituents over the phone and meetings and meetings and meetings. Commission meetings. So, I also want to recognize uh, our staff. A lot of folks that don't know people that were working even behind the scenes, like uh, our license division, Susie Spriggs, a um, legal division, Tracy Boyers and, and Thomas Boncrief, um, the uh, in, the communications division, Jennifer Wisniewski, and all her folks, law enforcement, Colonel Ryder and Lieutenant Colonel. Taylor and the majors and all the other folks in the field that were involved with that. Um, the area managers, many of whom were here yesterday, spent a lot of time de dealing with this and 
many, many hours. Um, Jamie Federson with the, the, the Waterfowl Program Coordinator of the Nashville office. And I know I'm going to forget some folks, and I apologize for that, but uh, Wally Aikens, the, the uh, Assistant Chief of Wildlife, too. And the Wildlife Program Managers, um, Patrick Lemons, Richard Kirk, who's retired, but he spent a lot of time on it, too. And of course, Wes Winton, who's taken his place. But probably the folks who spent an amazing amount of time and uh, through the holidays, uh, a lot of late night work, working, uh, daytime hours working, a lot of sleepless nights working, were uh, Chief Joe Benedict and Deputy Director Jason Maxidon and Assistant Director Chris Richardson, as you know. They did an incredible amount of work and time spent into this. And uh, I just wanted to acknowledge them publicly because they were outstanding in their job performance and they did a great, great thing. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director Wilson. Uh, we do have a few guests. I'm sure I don't have them all, but of course, Mr. and Mrs. Clarence Dye is our, our most dedicated, um, in my opinion, citizens of the state that, that, that really come to each one of our meetings or try to, and they really, uh, really are a benefit to this state. I mean, the, the salt of the earth. The Lot 5 community out there is blessed to have them. I can say that, but it's, it's been an honor to get to know both of y'all. Um, Mr. David Wright, who's a guest of Commissioner Tony Sanders. Um, Mr. Wally Childress, who many of you are probably going to get to know a lot better, uh, is here this morning. I'm glad to have him. Uh, Mike Butler, Tennessee Wildlife Federation. I'm going to call on Mark Ridings, our IT chief, and present an award. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, Chairman Holper, Commissioners. I'm here today to present the 2020 TWRA IT Professional of the Year Award. Each year, the IT division selects the IT Professional of the Year Award recipient from the IT Quarterly Award winners. Each quarterly award winner was selected from candidates who were nominated by the IT management team for distinguishing themselves both personally and professionally in the execution of their duties for the previous quarter. This year's recipient is no exception. This year's winners distinguished themselves by providing exceptional service as the web administrator for the IT division of TWRA. Our awardee is a consummate professional and takes great pride in their work. Some of the projects they are instrumental in developing include redesigning the waterfall blind draw pages, redesigning the law enforcement web portal, setting up the new virtual learning center where the focus is on teaching people how to hunt and fish. They also redesigned the wildlife management area pages, adding links to the electronic regulations catalog and the maps to the WMAs, as well as completing the Community Lakes project. In addition, they were tasked with an asset inventory of all the images and PDFs on the state's uh, TWRA site, which include individual reviewing and editing over 4,600 items. Moreover, they accomplished all the aforementioned responsibilities with a true sense of professionalism and attention to quality, while providing the highest level of generally courteous and heartfelt customer service. Their distinctive accomplishments reflect great credit upon themselves, the IT division, our agency, and the state of Tennessee. It is both my honor and privilege to present the 2020 TWA IT Professional of the Year Award to Michelle Ray. Michelle? All right, I'd like to call on Colonel Darren Ryder. While he's coming up, um, read the opening statement for him, but this is a rulemaking hearing before the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission to consider amending rule chapter 1660-01-18, which deals with rules and regulations governing possession of live wildlife. My name is Kurt Holbert, and I will conduct the hearing. <laughs> Sorry, uh, 
that, Chair. If it pleases the commission, I'm going to ask uh, Captain Cook to present this rule. It's his uh, underneath his program, and he's the subject matter expert. Okay. Captain Cook, if you'll go to the podium, that'd be great. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you, Chairman. You ready? We have a, several amendments to this rule to address um, some problems that have plagued the agency and have created some confusion with our folks that are involved in captive wildlife activities. One of the changes would be currently under the rule if you are a temporary exhibitor regardless of what class for class one or class two class one would be dangerous wildlife lions tigers elephants class two would be native wildlife species they would be included uh, we have some raptors that come in for education programs probably the most famous native species we have is twiggy the skiing squirrel that comes in occasionally we have the 21-day rule to file prior to the first event. It's imperative that I have the ability to reach out to people with dangerous wildlife to ensure they have all the proper safety equipment and can pass the inspection. But with native wildlife species, that public threat's not there. So we would be removing that requirement for people who are not bringing in dangerous wildlife for exhibition. Also, if you look at class three uh, wildlife as defined in the statute, there are three references within that statute. One says non-poisonous reptiles and amphibians with, and, and stops, and then it goes into some of the small mammals with also lists rats, mice, squirrels, and chipmunks with no reference to you know, whether they're native or non-native, and then one reference to native fur bearers solely for the purpose of fur. So to eliminate confusion and problems, people are seeking whether they need to have a permit, don't have a permit, um, and with the fur bearing issue for fur production only, we don't have fur farms. So in moving, I have to say this at this point is, uh, Mr. Thomas Moncrieff did an absolute masterful job of authoring this amendment uh, to get clarification and to make sure that all native wildlife is moved into class two, you know, all references in class three are deleted, and that we can move forward. So um, this is going to be a big help to us and, again, the folks that are involved in captive wildlife activities and that need permits. Next. Thank you. Also, the rule amendment would allow people that are permitted to rehabilitate black bear. Uh, black bear are, are um, considered class one along with being class four as well. Class four being black bear, white-tailed deer, wild turkey. Um, if you are permitted to rehabilitate, this amendment will allow you to transport black bear in accordance with all the class one requirements as set by statute for transportation. This will allow, at this point, the only people we have permitted is ABR, Appalachian Bear Rescue. This will allow them to go out in the field to help our folks with cases, transport. It's gonna be a huge help to the region four folks, uh, especially if we have mass failure in the park and we've got sows in the foothills or the valley and uh, with cubs. And again, I have to uh, thank Mr. Moncrief. He went through that rule and found all kinds of mistakes and corrected them. He also reworded some verbiage to where it was more correct. He also made sure everything was done to make sure that it was in sync with the statutes that give us the authority to promulgate this rule. So he has spent a lot of time and it is a much cleaner, much more understandable, it is, as we hope that it will be amended, it is a much better rule than it has ever been since it was codified in 1991. So, does the commission have any questions in regard to this rule amendment? Okay, we have a motion. 
I have a motion from Commissioner King and a second from Commissioner Ripley. Do I, is there any questions or discussion? Any comment from the public? Danette, would you call the roll, please? Dennis Gardner? Yes. Angie Box? Yes. Jim Ripley? Yes. Jimmy Granberry? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Connie King? Yes. Tony Sanders? Yes. James Stroud? Kent Woods? Yes. Tommy Woods? Yes. Hank Wright? Yes. Brian McLaren? Yes. Kurt Holbert? Yes. Thank you, Wally. Motion carried. Thank you, Commissioners. I really appreciate it. This will be an immense help to everyone. Thank you. We'll call on Frank Fiss. Commissioner's Chief. Thank you, Chairman Holbert. Commissioners, we I have one slide, please. One more. Okay, yes, we, we have $194,000 from the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Asian Carp Fund that we need to add to our TWRA budget to uh, to, to add funds to our incentive program. As you know, we're, our incentive program is working very well and fishermen are harvesting more, more carp in recent months and we're, we're gonna need these funds there to, you know, to maintain that program into next year. But these funds otherwise cannot be spent by the agency unless we bring them into our budget. Okay. Second. Kent Woods made the uh, motion with a commissioner from Rip <laughs> a second from Commissioner Ripley. Any questions or discussion? All in. Sure. Okay. All in favor of the budget expansion of one hundred ninety-four thousand dollars? Let me know by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, light sign. Motion carried. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. in Tarkington. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In, in your booklets and on the screen, I'll have a uh, several slide and a, if you're in your books, a two-page report, financial report. I'm reporting through the uh, month of December of 2020. Uh, the boating fund is approximately 447000 above its projection for the year in income, uh, while the expense level is at approximately 27%. On the wildlife uh, fund, ne the next slide, uh, the uh, actual collections of license sales is uh, 957,000 above projection for the year, while the expense is at approximately 38% of the annual allotment. The Wetlands Acquisition and Maintenance Fund has approximately 15 million balanced through December. And the last, uh, last slide and last page in your book is the uh, funds invested with the Treasury. Uh, currently through December, it's uh, approximately a half percent uh, behind the earnings for the year, while the SPIF or the state pool investment funds, that's the short term uh, investment of our, of our idle excess funds is approximately 0.16%. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could take just a second, I'd like to thank, thank you, uh, Chairman Holbert and uh, Commissioner Sanders and King and uh, Gardner and, and Stroud for your leadership in the past, uh, past several years, and especially your interest and involvement in the budget and financial operations of the, of the agency. It's, it's vitally important uh, function of the agency. 
Uh, and I just want you to know each of you will, uh, will definitely be missed. Uh, subject to your questions, that concludes my brief. Okay. Any questions? Thanks, Ken. I yes. appreciate what you do very much. Okay, I'm going to call on Commissioner Tony Sanders, um, who came up with this next award, and I'm, I'm going to let him take over and handle it. We're going to do it, uh, I guess, any way we want to, because what are you going to do? Kick me off? I mean, really. <laughs> Run me off, yeah. Um, the way we're going to do it is I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about the award real quick. Uh, I'm going to name, if Brian McLaren will bring me those three envelopes that are beside my desk. If you'll bring me those up here, I'm going to name the three people that aren't here. And then uh, Dennis is going to come up and talk about the person he nominated. And then I'm going to present the winner. So the Legacy Award came up. Uh, Kurt, I appreciate uh, you saying that I came up with the idea. And it was something that actually came off of surfing uh, the web and seeing a story, but following up and looking at the comments. And, and the story was about a young man who had taken his first deer, and the guy had posted it, um, talked about he'd been taking young people hunting on his farm to let them get their first deer for about 10 or 15 years. And I thought, man, what a really cool idea which made me start thinking about all the people that give back to the great outdoors. And so I, I spoke with Kurt, brought it to the commission, and we came up with what I hope will become an annual award called the uh, Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission. It's the commissioners uh, that, that come up with this, but it's, it's the Legacy Award. And the, the purpose is to recognize people who are not commissioners, who are not agency employees, because there's all kinds of things that are done for that, but to recognize people that we run across in our districts and in our, in our lives uh, in doing this job that really make a difference. And uh, this year there were five nominees. Three of them cannot be here today, so, uh, but I do want to recognize them because I think it's really important um, to realize that there are people out there doing great things. Uh, the first one is Sam Hagen, which was nominated by Commissioner Connie King. Um, second one is Anthony Landreth, which was nominated by uh, Commissioner Angie Box. And then the third one is Jake Davis, who was nominated by Chairman Kurt Holbert. And uh, so it's a, I think it's a real testament to be nominated for this award, and, and I wish you, we could distribute what was said, and maybe we can, uh, what was said in the nominations, because these people give back for a lot of different things uh, to the outdoors. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dennis, who's, who nominated someone, he's gonna talk about the people that he nominated, and then I'll come back up and talk about the winner. I'll just do it from uh, right here, but I, I nominated Mr. Clarence Dyes. And uh, Mr. Dyes has, has been a friend of mine for a few years, but uh, I've become to understand exactly what value he has to uh, Tennessee's wildlife and outdoors uh, <clears throat> over that time in friendship. He's always here. And I'm just gonna read what I wrote up and, and sent in for his legacy uh, award. So Clarence's nomination, goes as follows, uh, Mr. Clarence Dyes began trapping decades ago while laid off from his job. He was vi visiting his dad and, and saw some old traps hanging in the barn, needed something to do. He set his first trap line and hasn't looked back. The son of a sharecropper, he learned early to make his dollars count and has always seen it as a wise investment to contribute to his state. Mr. Dyes has instructed numerous TWA trapping education classes, held multiple positions with the Tennessee Fur Harvesters Association, as well as at the national level. Makes and donates custom turkey calls, uh, giving some to local legislators, and have, uh, has played an instrumental role in crafting current trapping rep regulations in Tennessee. These are just a few of the reasons Clarence Dyes was awarded National Trapper of the Year uh, from, for the, east, the eastern part of the United States in 2018. 
Mr. Dyes rarely misses a TF uh, uh, Fish and Wildlife Commission meeting and ensures the commission gets accurate information on all things related to trapping and the harvesting of fur. Trapping is an essential part of keeping Tennessee's wildlife in balance. Mr. Dyes is also a world-class turkey hunter and was awarded certificates from the National Wildlife Turkey Federation for his four Grand Slams and four Royal Slams. He was the first and at the time only, may still be, uh, Tennessee to score them. He's probably still the only one, certainly with multiples. He's also a black powder expert and historian. Uh, in closing, uh, thank you for considering Mr. Clarence Dyes for this award. He is a true gentleman that is always willing to share his knowledge and experience of the outdoors. And uh, with that, I'd like to invite Clarence Dyes up here to receive a certificate and a, and a small token from the commission. And uh, thank you, Clarence. I am, uh, I'm very honored to be able to um, award the Legacy Award winner this year, and that is uh, David Wright. I'm just going to read a little bit of what I read. I first met David about 11 years ago. The agency does a hunt for uh, soldiers who have come back from around the world in various forms of injured. Um, and it's, we started this in Chattanooga uh, with uh, Ben Layton and working with the hospital out of Clarksville. Uh, it's called Healing Outside of Hospital Walls. And this particular year, uh, we were short of guns. Tennessee doesn't have, you know, shotgun season. And so there's not a lot of people that have shotguns. In Tennessee and so where we hunt we have to use muzzle loaders or shotguns so I just made a comment on the air one day that we were doing this hunt for for warriors and we needed some shotguns because we couldn't find enough for our guys because we don't want these guys to have to deal with anything and David calls me on my radio or after my radio show and says hey I got a shotgun for you and I'll bring it by never met the man he'd been listening to my show for a few years I never met him until that day on the streets of downtown Chattanooga when we're swapping guns on the parking lot or on the streets of Chattanooga. And so when I brought him the gun back a few, and he kind of said, hey, bring it back whenever you're done. When I brought it back a couple of uh, weeks later, I kind of explained to him what the deal was. And he says, man, I'd like to get involved with that. And so starting that next year, he started stepping a little more involved and a little more involved. Well, about probably three or four years into this process, he goes, man, I got to do something for these guys. And so he started a personal fundraiser to raise money to give gift cards to these soldiers. And then when they got to Chattanooga, he took a lot of them shopping uh, with the money that he had raised to give them gift cards. And then the next year he said, you know, that's not enough. So he started raising more. And, and I don't know what the final, uh, they get like a $200, $250 gift card just for coming in. And he takes them out shopping and it's just, it's really kind of cool. Well, he's gotten more and more involved. Uh, one year we had uh, a breakfast supplier uh, drop out all of a sudden. 
So he and his wife get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning to cook breakfast for the hunters, the guides, and it's probably 50 or 60 people involved in this production. And it just keeps getting more and more. He decided he was going to start guiding. And so David, not only does he cook breakfast, now he gets up and he guides. And he guides, and the way it works, you guide from about 5.30 in the morning until about 7.30, 8 o'clock at night for two days. You come back and you do it. And he keeps doing more and more and more. And to me, when I came up with the concept that the commission approved for the Legacy Award, it was exactly people like David that's giving back. It's nothing in return. But he is the one, just like the other four people that have given back, have, are creating a legacy in this state for people to come, and that's exactly what that award is for. So David, Kurt. Stand there. Tony, thank you so much for coming up with that. That's a, the best idea, and I appreciate your thoughts. And glad we can do that. You know, you're you're more than welcome, and I hope that uh, that this continues forever. Okay, Commissioner Sanders, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, I had the privilege of being asked to chair the nominating committee uh, for the upcoming year, uh, Commissioner Dennis Gardner and uh, Commissioner Kent Woods were uh, also on the committee with me. We met after we got Ken out of the duck blinds. Uh, and our recommendation is uh, Chairman Jim Ripley, Vice Chair Angie Box, and Secretary Tommy Woods. Okay, are there any other nominations?
Mr. Jones. I was going to make a, uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that nomination cease and we vote for Commissioner Ripley, Commissioner Box, and Commissioner Woods by acclamation. Second from Commissioner King. All in favor say aye. Aye. And all opposed, light sign. Motion carried. Congratulations. Commissioner Ripley, Thank I'll you. let you take care of adjournments. Thank you very much for your confidence in me. Um, it's kind of overwhelming, and um, we're going to have a great year. We're going to get some good stuff done. We're going to have some fun. But before I uh, let you go, I want to say a few things about the five that are leaving us, and I've left my notes. are losing some great commissioners today and Kurt as his last official order to me ordered me to keep this short, uh, short but you know we'll see uh, I am going to try to keep it a little bit sh short and I'm going to say this I tried to come up with a word for every one of these great commissioners that are leaving us that I thought would describe them uh, best. And I'm gonna start with James Stroud, who can't be here today, but who is a wonderful person. And I hope that you all will join me in praying for James as he goes through this tough time. The word that I came up with for James is grace, because he's the most gracious, giving, person that you'll ever meet he's just a wonderful giving person and he was a total asset to us uh, he, he his judgment everything that he said was positive and uh, James we're going to miss you Tony Sanders communicator when Tony speaks you better listen, because he got something to say, and it's going to be something that's powerful and useful, and we appreciate you. And I, I'm, I'm so pleased to become your friend. I hope I'm your friend. Uh, really, we're going to miss you, my friend. Connie King, one of the first commissioners I ever met in my first term, beautiful. I don't mean that necessarily, she's a beautiful woman, don't, don't get me wrong, but she's beautiful inside and out. If you know Connie, you like Connie. You can't help liking her. She's a wonderful person and they seated her beside me at the early meetings and it was just, just brightened my day to come in and sit down with Connie. She's very smart, great judgment, and uh, her husband's a character and our friend. We'll miss you, Connie. Dennis Gardner. I'm gonna call him steady. There's something about being an air traffic controller, I guess, where they're just uh, subjected to constant stress. And once they're not doing that job, they're just steady. He just, he just rocks along. And what great questions and, and comments and insightful thoughts he shared with us. He's a dear friend of mine. Uh, and it's a privilege, Dennis, to have served with you. And we will sorely miss you. So I guess that gets me to Kurt. And Kurt, 
really did not want me to talk about him today. He asked me not to. And I said a few words about him last night. But the word that comes to mind uh, with regard to Kurt is leader. Because he's been our leader for two years and without fail has conducted himself and his commission in an exemplary fashion. But he's a good man. He doesn't know that I stole this from his notebook this morning. Kurt, could I have your attention? <laughs> and, and what it says is dad. And he carries this with him, apparently, when he comes to these meetings as a reminder of his family. The only time I served in his absence was because he had to go to a fishing tournament with one of his children. He loves his children. He's a great man. Kurt, we are so appreciative of you. You have taken us through CWD, Asian carp, the duck blind deal, which, as I said last night, took a, a great deal of courage and we appreciate you very much. So we have a little something for you here today. If you'll come up. This says, Commissioner Kurt Holbert, in grateful appreciation for services rendered to the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission for March 1, 2015 to February 28, a little off, 2021, and as chairman of the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission from March 1, 2019 to March 5, 2021. Thank you, buddy. We're so proud of you and we appreciate very much what you've done. While you're up here, where's Kurt? I'm gonna give this He's back fighting. to you. Later. Sorry, I stole that. Sorry, I stole it. We have some gifts for you, outgoing commissioners. This morning, this Connie King. Twenty days. Imagine twenty days. Couldn't be here today, but thank you all so much. Yeah. It's been a pleasure serving with y'all. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourned.